Well, hello, and welcome to Fuquay Verena United Methodist Church. My name is Owen. I'm one of the pastors here, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, and we're glad you're here. We know that life can get crazy, and sometimes we have to find time to worship during the week, and so we have crafted this worship opportunity just for you. Uh, we know, you know, nothing's perfect, but whenever you're worshiping and wherever you're worshiping, we're glad that we can be here worshiping together. Uh, if you are with us for the first time or you'd like to let us know you're here, uh, if they just got questions we can follow up with. We'd love for you to text us, send uh, the word hello to the number that's right here at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to get back in touch with you as soon as we can to see how we can connect or help solve whatever it is uh, that you've got for us. So don't hesitate to reach out. Also, if this is an opportunity that you regularly participate in and you'd like to partner with us in Michigan, and ministry. Uh, we'd love to have that partnership with you as we serve our greater community here around Fuquay Verena. Um, you can go to our website, fvumc.org slash give. Uh, and we'd love, again, any sort of support that you can offer will help us continue to do this and do it well. Um, and so you can check that out while you're there. Um, anything that you need, hopefully, will be right there on our website. Uh, particularly if you're looking for other worship opportunities, uh, you'll be able to see those on our worship page. Uh, and again, we're just so glad you're here and we hope that you find something meaningful, something you can hang your hat on this week as we participate in worship together. We worship the God who was we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, He parted the raging sea, our God, He holds a victory, yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise Oh, oh, oh We shout out your praise who saves we sing to the god who always makes a way because he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave my god still rolling stones away yeah. there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the lord our god is surely in this place and we won't be quiet we shout out your praise oh oh, oh. we shout out Well, this is a, a special message for those of you who are worshiping with us online today um, uh, or after the fact or on demand, as we say. Um, we're going to be making uh, a similar message, sharing a similar message in all of our in-person worship services this weekend. Uh, but we just wanted to make sure that you heard it as well. Um, we are entering into October, which will be a season of generosity for us. And we're going to invite everyone who's a part of our worshiping family, the worshiping life of our congregation, uh, to partner together to support the mission and ministry in the year ahead. 2023. I can't even believe that it's 23 already, but here we find ourselves. 99% um, of what it takes uh, financially to run the mission and ministry of this church comes from the generosity of those who are part of our church family and worship with us regularly. Um, and whether that's already includes you or whether you uh, would like to join us uh, partnering together to make all of this possible, uh, we'd like to invite you to do that this year, uh, looking for the year ahead. And we're going to have plenty of opportunities to talk about this more uh, in the weeks as we go through them. Uh, but we just wanted to make you aware of that because hopefully uh, in your mailbox this week, 
uh, you will receive a piece from us if you don't get it and you'd like to, kind of outlining where we've come from and where we're headed. Uh, we'd love to put one of those in your hand. Uh, also, I say all this because uh, this year, in addition uh, to kind of preparing for 2023, uh, we're going to be launching a capital campaign called Revise, Refresh, Renew to upfit the existing footprint of our building uh, to make it ready, not just for the mission and ministry we're doing today, uh, but for the years ahead of us. Um, and we're going to be doing 11 projects that revise, refresh, and renew our building. And we'd love uh, to invite you to come uh, next Sunday, October the 9th from uh, 4.30 until 6.00. Um, to uh, an event that we're calling Visioning Together. That's kind of a state of the church. You'll hear where we've come from in the past year, where we're, where we're headed in the year ahead. Um, and we're going to give all the details for Revise, Refresh, or New. So I'd love to have you join us for that. Um, and like I said, uh, more to come uh, on all the how, what, when, where, and why. Uh, but we would love to invite you to begin considering what it would look like to partner with us financially uh, in the year ahead. We thank you so much for your generosity up until this point, And we look forward to this ongoing conversation through the month of October. About a year and a half ago, Hope called me one at one afternoon and said, hey, I, I think we're ready to take your class to the next level. She said, in spite of COVID, um, we are growing. We are looking for ways to engage new people in the church. The Fuquay Marina area is growing by leaps and bounds, and we'd like for you and James to consider um, inviting new people into your small group. And so we did. Um, we ended up having to move into a new classroom and right out of the gate, we went from about four couples to, um, gosh, 11 couples. So Christine's like, well, come on to our class. There's these new families. You're gonna find all these great friends. There's gonna be other couples with young children. And it was interesting because the rest of us were empty nesters. That was the thing that we had in common. And we talked about you know, life together as, as empty nesters. So it was unique to have these two young couples come in, into our group. Um, so it's nice to hear their perspective on things. And they were always happy to listen to Drew and I's point of view, which didn't always necessarily line up with theirs as empty nesters and ours as bringing new children into the world. But in the background, the phones were ringing for other people to get connected and we were just simply out of space. So it was at that point that I picked up the phone and called Elizabeth and said, would you consider? But so she made that call one day and was like, hey, I think we need to expand our class. And Drew and I, of course, were like, yes, absolutely. Um, so we meet Sunday nights um, while there's childcare here at the church for all ages. Then um, we get together outside of church sit together on Sunday mornings and then we've discussed marriage, we've discussed parenting, and we joke often Sunday okay. evenings of, okay, who made it to church this morning with all of their children dressed? And then who made it back to church by 4.30 with all of their children still in tow? And that's who gets the rah-rah cheerleaders. I definitely think that this class, leading this class has opened up so many opportunities for us. So us scattering our glitter is taking every single one of those couples and families and saying, hey, come on, come with us. Um, we'll hang out together and spend time together and learn together. And I think that that is really what scattering that glitter about is just being there for people and opening um, yourself and your hearts to accept them. Well, hey everybody, it's great uh, to be together with you today. Um, I would love to begin uh, by talking a little bit about glitter we all know it and love it, right? Uh, glitter has this incredible capacity uh, to get stuck anywhere, <laughs> anywhere that it is, right? Whether it's your hair or the corner of a minivan, like if glitter's around, it's getting stuck somewhere. Um, and we know that it's there because it reflects light when nothing else around it is. And uh, we've been playing around with this metaphor and I, I love it. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that it is helpful for us this month as we talk about uh, the generosity of God and what it looks like for us to reflect that generosity in and around our community. Here's the question I'd like to ask. What would it look like if we as a church simply scattered the goodness of God all around our community like glitter? Um, what if in small ways and in underappreciated and underrecognized like places in the 
places that we live and work and play. We scattered like glitter, the goodness of God. Um, a lot of times, frankly, uh, as a church, not necessarily our church, but just kind of the church, uh, when we talk about serving, when we talk about generosity, sometimes, sometimes we talk about it in ways that, uh, I mean, I think are well-intentioned. We know what we mean when we say them, and I don't think we mean to say anything bad. Um, but sometimes when we talk about it, it's helpful, I think, to to put ourselves on uh, maybe those who are receiving the serving or receiving the generosity uh, that the church has showed up to bring. Um, and I don't always know that we show up super well uh, like that. Uh, I heard someone use the example one time a number of years ago. It was really striking to me. Uh, and I, I <laughs> striking probably because at some point I've been guilty of it unintentionally. Uh, you know, you show up uh, to a, a serving opportunity and it says, you know, it's like a branded t-shirt for the church and it says, serving the least and the last and the lost uh, and the folks uh, that are there in, in a place of need uh, who are receiving the generosity from the church are forced to kind of ask, well, gosh, I, I wonder what category they think of me in. Am I one of the least? Am I one of the last? Am I one of the lost? Um, and so I always just want to be, I want to be aware, aware of how we're saying what we're talking about when we show up. Um, so I think sometimes we show up again with all the good intentions in the world uh, to to solve the day and to be the heroes, you know, whether that's financially or spiritually or, you know, whatever it is, economically, like we show up heroically. Um, when I think about this image of glitter, uh, you know, it's it's something that's so small and insignificant and it's just in all of the corners, like it's just around, but it reflects, it reflects light. Uh, what would it look like for us in small ways and in, in places that we wouldn't necessarily generally think of it? Uh, we didn't show up to, to solve all the problems of the world or to be the hero of the day, uh, but simply to reflect the generosity of God in and around our community, all the places that we uh, live and work and play. What if we scatter the goodness of God uh, like, like glitter? Um, whether that's in the backed up turn lane by the Krispy Kreme, uh, when everybody else is honking, or whether that's in the produce section, uh, you know, fighting over some food lion fruit, or uh, in our classrooms, or on our soccer field with our teams, or on Microsoft Teams <laughs> with our teams, uh, what would it look like for us to scatter scatter the goodness of God? Um, if we're going to reflect the generosity of God, uh, it may be helpful for us to, to talk about what that generosity looks like. And so that's what we'll spend some of our time today today doing. I want to do that uh, by turning to a parable, uh, often called the parable of the sower. Um, it's, it's, a, it's like a very, a very traditional standard rabbinic, like a rabbi would have told a parable like this, uh, not just Jesus, but other rabbis of Jesus's day uh, would have used this kind of same fourfold um, uh, sort of parable. And we hear it in all, all three of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, but here's how it goes. This is uh, Matthew's version, chapter 13, verse one through nine. Uh, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and he sat beside the sea. Uh, so, such great crowds came around him that he got into a boat and he sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach, right? So he gets in a boat, kind of pushes himself offshore a little bit. Uh, everybody's standing on the beach like an amp, it's like an amphitheater, right? So everybody can hear what he's saying. And he says, uh, tells him lots of parables, but this is the first one. Listen, a sower, farmer, went out to sow seed. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly, but since they had no depth of soil when the sun rose, they were quickly scorched. Since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns. The thorns grew up and choked them out. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears to hear Listen, now, uh, Jesus is going to go on and interpret this, uh, interpret this parable for us. So uh, if you want to know exactly what Jesus thinks this parable means, um, you can go on and, and read Jesus' exact words, like we've captured them here. Uh, and again, he walks through what we would have expected out of this parable. There's four different types of soil. Those who hear the word of Torah, uh, or in Jesus' case, those who hear his words. Um, if their heart is rich and tilled up and ready to receive uh, to hear and to obey the words of Jesus or the words of, of teaching of God, the Torah, um, then great fruitfulness will grow out of that disciple. And there's all sorts of different types of disciples. In fact, there's three other types where the word of God does not uh, find itself rooted so deeply. 
uh, and the fruitfulness uh, comes and goes or doesn't come at all. Um, again, uh, this parable is about how we, as disciples, as followers of Jesus, how we hear and obey, how we respond to the teachings of Christ, to the Word of God in our lives. That's what this parable, that's what this parable is about. That's what this parable is about. Um, this week, as we think about the generosity of God, I, I'd like to just look at this parable from a slightly different angle. Um, and I recognize that this is not how Jesus interpreted this parable. And I, I recognize that there is a risk in, in reading too far into parables like this, uh, further than maybe we should. Um, but I think, I think it's help, it's been helpful for me to see this parable from a slightly different angle. Uh, and I don't think that what I'm saying is inconsistent with the nature and character of God that we would see in any other scriptures uh, that we're talking about it. Um, this week, I want to focus on the farmer. I want to focus on the farmer, right? Which is the God character in this particular, uh, in this particular parable. Um, and, and any farmer worth her or his weight uh, in, you know, in, in seed <laughs> uh, would, would know that you should only scatter the grain that you have in the places where that grain is likely to bear good fruit. Uh, seed is expensive. Seed is expensive. And so why waste it by scattering it in uh, other places? Um, versions of this talk about the the farmer with like handfuls of seed, just scattering abundantly and generously in all of these places where the seed is unlikely to bear any fruit, right? Any good farmer would know that you you want to sow sow your grain, your seed only in places um, where it's likely to take root and grow and and you know yield a bountiful harvest. So so what does it say? about the generosity of God, that this sower is sowing so extravagantly in places uh, where the likelihood of a good yield or a good outcome uh, is, is likely to be. Um, not stingily sowing where there might but probably won't be a yield, but instead um, sowing extravagantly regardless of the likelihood uh, that it will take root. Um, to me, that suggests uh, that our God is a God whose generosity, whose posture of generosity towards us um, is not dependent on our ability to respond. It's not dependent on what the outcome of that's going to be. Our God chooses to sow extravagantly and abundantly regardless of those things. Now, um, I'll be honest, when I read this passage, uh, it's helpful, uh, I think, to ask reflective questions. You know, is my heart um, you know, maybe hard earth is, are there thorns that are growing up in and around uh, my heart? Like, but I, I ask those questions always with this sort of backstop default of, well, gosh, good things have happened in my life. Like the word of God has taken root in my life and I'm so grateful for that. So every time I want to ask an evaluative question about the condition of my heart, I do so with this kind of default assumption in the background that I I'm a good disciple, right? I'm a disciple who has good soil um, in his heart. Um, and, and I don't know that that would be your struggle, but that's mine. And yet, and yet, um, that has not always been the case for me, right? Uh, it might be where I am now, but it hasn't always been the case for me. Um, my heart has been a heart made of hard, dry-packed clay. My heart has been uh, a shallow one. My heart has been one where thorns and thicket and kudzu and ivy have choked out good things. My heart has been all of those things. And yet it is because of the generosity of God that God's good word continued to find itself sowed into those places of my life into that when that was the condition of my heart. Thanks be to God that our God is a God who sows generously and not stingily. Thanks be to God that our God, whose generosity, whose posture of generosity towards us is not dependent on the likelihood of outcome, but whose generosity is found in proportion to the hope that the grace of God can soften the hardest of hearts, can clear the thickest of thorns and can bring and yield good and wonderful fruit. I, we, like all of us, 
are the result of a God whose generosity did not stop, did not stop sowing abundantly in places that were not likely to yield good fruit. God's gracious generosity is not in response to our readiness to receive it. It is simply an outflow of the nature and character of God. Now, here's the trick. You and I, we're we're made in the image of God. And if this is the nature and character of God, then it is also our nature and character. We have been created, like we are hardwired to be this kind of generous. We've been created to be this extravagant and this abundant in the way we offer ourselves and our lives and the goodness of God, the word of God to everyone that we meet. To suggest that we're not is to live in a way that is counter to who we've been created to be and to call that normal or human nature as we sometimes call it. So I'm wondering for us out loud together today, how would our posture towards others change if we reflected this kind of generosity? How would our posture towards others change if we reflected this kind of generosity? I believe that we are generous because it's in our nature to be generous, because we are created in the image of a generous sower, of a generous God, that that's who we are. I believe that we are generous because God has chosen to sow generously with us into hearts poorly conditioned to bear fruit. And I believe that we are called, not commanded, but called, invited to live into the fullness of our generous nature, to be generous people in proportion to our hope, in proportion to our faith and the Spirit of God to bring forth fruit, not in proportion to our uh, anticipated outcome. I'd like to leave us with some questions this morning with all these things in mind. The first is this. Um, Who in your life, like glitter, has reflected the generosity of God by scattering goodness in your life? Whose flash of glitter has helped you know the love of God? And then I want to ask kind of a question about you. Where are you reflecting this sort of generous image of God? Where are you showing up like glitter, reflecting this generosity in the lives of others? And if it's harder to answer that second question because it's about you, um, or if you can't see it, uh, then perhaps you could ask a friend or a family member where they see you doing it. Uh, Friends, together, I would like to invite us in this month to consider the nature and character of God who has been so generous to us and invite us to like glitter scatter the goodness of God in all the places that we live, work, and play, because that's who we are. We'll see you next week. As we've been singing this song over the past couple of weeks, I keep coming back to the story of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. They had found themselves in prison, and yet in the midnight hour, they started praying and praising and worshiping God. And when they did, God moved, and the prison walls came tumbling down. And when the guard came in, he was sure that he would have seen that they had all escaped. But instead, he found himself surrounded by a group of prisoners that were now new believers in Jesus Christ. Friends, I am sure that our God is still moving like that. I am sure that he is just as good, whether we are standing on the mountaintop or in the midst of the valley. Let us turn and praise his name.
Again, it's been great to be with you together today. Uh, I would remind you, we'd love to know you're here. Uh, if you want to text us, just text the word hello to the number that's at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to follow up with you, uh, particularly if there are questions you have after today's worship or if there's something we can do to help you take the next step in your life of faith, your journey. Uh, we'd love to be able to do that with you, to partner with you in that way. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. And again, if you'd like to join with us in mission and ministry here in Fuquay Verena, uh, you can go to our website, fvumc.org slash give. Uh, we'd love to your support. We'd love to partner with you in ministry in all sorts of different ways. We have plenty of other worshiping opportunities uh, live on Sunday morning, uh, as well as throughout the week. And so don't forget to hop over to our website, fvumc.org, to check out all those opportunities. We'd love to get a chance to meet you should the time come. Uh, and until then, uh, it's been great to worship together with you today. Okay.